JBN, we keep you informed. Who was Jim Brown? The JLP affiliated Don. After the demise of Tivola Gardens enforcer Claudius Massop, who died in a hail of police bullets, and his chief on Joe Carl Bayer Mitchell, who succumbed to a drug overdose, an opening was created for Lester Lloyd Coke, popularly known as Jim Brown. He stepped in to fill the breach left by the two men just before the Jamaica Labour Party JLP landslide victory at the polls in 1980. Although he was known by the name Jim Brown, Coke's original moniker was Babai, and those who knew him say he was a tough, no-nonsense type of man who fought tooth and nail for his party's honor. Like Massop, Coke was nabbed by agents of the state, thrown behind bars, and slapped with a murder charge. After a few months in jail, Coke was freed after the main witness to the murder was slain. It was after his release from jail that Coke shared the moniker Babai and took upon himself the nickname Jim Brown after the Hall of Fame American football player. It is said that Coke honed his skills as a steel-nerved and fierce enforcer during the political turbulent 1970s when the rules of engagement in politically volatile areas like the neighboring constituencies of Western Kingston and the South St. Andrew demanded that the enemy be pushed back. This scenario provided the perfect breeding ground for Coke and others of his Ike to evolve. Coke was responsible for keeping his political rivals who wished to attack his community and inflict violence upon his citizens on the back foot. Coke, like many before him, was a product of a divisive political system charted by early politicians. But unlike Massop and Mitchell, Coke was willing enough to wean himself off political largesse and perhaps can be described as the first political enforcer to free himself from the economic shackles foisted on him and others of the same ike by political power brokers. After the JLP victory in 1980, Jamaica, which was one of the major suppliers of marijuana to the United States, Canada, and the United Kingdom, evolved into a major transshipment port for the deadly drug cocaine. The JLP had chosen to join the U.S. side in the Cold War and at that government's behest embarked upon a major ganja eradication campaign. The anti-ganja initiative caused an economic fallout among the growers and traders of the illegal crop and forced drug traffickers to seek alternative means to make their money. Cocaine commands a much higher market price than ganja and proved the perfect foil for drug traders who diverted their skills to satisfy an overwhelming demand for the drug, especially in the United States. It was during this time that Coke, along with his confidant Vivian Blake, developed a massive drug running empire with bases in Florida, New York, New Jersey, Philadelphia, Chicago, and other parts of the U.S. United States federal authorities would be jolted by the brutal dispensation and modus operandi of the Jamaican gangsters, among them the Spangler's Posse, bitter enemies of the Shower Posse, whose original members hailed from Matthews Lane and other nearby areas affiliated to the People's National Party. The Shower Posse, so called because of their fondness for spraying their enemies with bullets, were so feared by their rivals abroad that the U.S. government was forced to launch a massive counter-offensive aimed at destabilizing the gang. The Spangler's Posse were no less brutal, and the political violence, which had been bred since the 1940s, played itself out in the streets of North America. That gang was also a target of police investigations. While Blake was the brain behind the empire, Coke provided the brawn, and in the process gained enough wealth to ignore the feed in the political trough, which was dispensed in too little amounts by political representatives. But his wealth did not mean that he would lapse in his political duties. In 1984, Coke reported led a team of men from his stronghold of Tivoli Gardens into Wilton Gardens, also known as Rima, then a JLP aligned community run by orders from the bosses in Garden, another name for Tivoli. For years, Rima was regarded as a sort of bastard cousin of the more developed and powerful Tivoli Gardens, but Rima had itself spawned fierce street warriors who were hardened in the heart of criminal warfare 
by their daily experiences living in an area which was the first line of defense against PMP thugs who launched repeated attacks from Arnett Gardens. A disagreement between persons from Tivoli Gardens and Rima prompted Coke and his gang foray into Rima. When the gang left, seven men lay dead. Soon after, police arrested Coke and charged him with seven counts of murder. But Coke was again freed after no one came forward to testify against him. On the day of his release, heavily armed men celebrated by firing a barrage of gunshots in the air directly in front of the Supreme Court, sending police officers court staff and members of the bar scampering for cover and cowering in fear. Coke was held high by the crowd and carried back to his fortress in Tivoli Gardens. Soon after then, Prime Minister and a member of Parliament for West Kingston, Edward Siaga, along with other JLP officials, visited Rima and appealed to the residents to let bygones be bygones. With his legal troubles in Jamaica behind him and his political connections rock solid, Coke now had time to continue his illegal quest at a wealth creation. In 1986, federal authorities in the United States reported that the Shoa Posse had spread their wings to over a dozen U.S. cities and were raking in a substantial portion of the 25% of the billion-dollar illegal drug trade that Jamaican gangs earned. But as the Shoa Posse grew in stature, so did the federal investigation into their activities. And in November 1988, 53 Shower Posse members were arrested in New Jersey on drug distribution charges. A month before, a federal grand jury indicted 34 members of the Shower Posse, including Coke, Blake, and Blake's two half-brothers, Harold Housing and Tony Bruce. Coke managed to remain a free man until the beginning of the 1990s, when international police investigations began closing in on the Shore Posse. Richard Storyteller Morrison, a leading Posse member, was captured in Jamaica by U.S. authorities and illegally whisked abroad to stand a trial. In February 1991, Coke was arrested by local police and locked up at the General Penitentiary, now called the Tower Street Adult Correctional Facility, after the U.S. government requested that he be extradited to that country to answer to murder and drug trafficking charges. Coke's bid to acquire a special leave to appeal was rejected by the United Kingdom Privy Council, and after a year of legal wrangling, the writing was on the wall. While Coke languished in prison, his son Mark Coke, also known as Jati, was shot dead as he rode a motorcycle on Maxfield Avenue on February 2, 1992. Jati was in the process of preparing for a memorial dance in honor of Claudius Massop when he was killed. The killing of Coke's son sparked a new round of political bloodletting, and in the weeks that followed, shootings occurred in Hannah Town, Arnett Gardens, Denham Town, Rose Lane, and Matthews Lane, prompting then Prime Minister Michael Manley to call for a meeting with Siaga. The violence also sparked a march by a group of churches through the affected communities. But the violence would also spread abroad. The Florida-based website www.emergency.com posted this report in August 1992. A drug gang war that started in Kingston, Jamaica early in 1992 may have recently spilled over into the streets and bars of Miami. Reportedly, an early Saturday morning nightclub shooting of 22 people involved members of the Jamaican Shore Posse. Gang crimes officers of the Broad County Sheriff's Office said that the nightclub killings may have been retribution for the February killing of Mark Hoke, a leader of the Jamaican Shower Posse drug gang. The Shower Posse supposedly gets its name from the show of lead it shoots at rival gangs. An agent of the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco and Firearms says that Saturday's shootings had all the earmarks of a Jamaican posse hit. Special Agent Joe Vince was quoted by the United Press International saying the posses are the most vicious organized crime group in the United States today. Captain Al Lambiti of the Broward County Sheriff's Office said that the shooting was a perfect textbook example of how the posse does business. The younger Cook's murder was rumored to stem from a dispute between shower posse members and members of the Black Roses crew 
which was then led by William Willie Agard Moore, who would eventually be killed at a weekly dance called Beach Line held at the Elsha Beach in St. Catherine. Popular dancer Gerald Bogolevi was reportedly dosed with alcohol during the dispute, which was diffused by police officers who were on the scene. Three weeks later, the very day Son was buried, Coke was burnt to death in a mysterious fire inside his cell. Unconfirmed reports suggested that the notorious gangster committed suicide because he realized that he would be handed over to the U.S. authorities. But this claim has been refuted by others who say his death was a result of a botch escaped attempt. Still others say Coke was murdered to keep him from spilling the beans to the Americans. JBN, we keep you informed. Please remember to like, subscribe, share, leave us a comment and click the notification bell to receive our daily uploads.